Hey guys, it's Garrett. What's going on? I am out here working on the backup Jeep for the life again. Uh, still not on the road yet. I'm pecking away on it a little at a time. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about shocks because I've got a very good opportunity to show you uh, some things about them and how they fail. Um, first of all, there are different kinds of shocks. You've got oil charge shocks, which just have oil in them to dampen the effect of impact. Uh, you've got oil-filled gas charge shocks, which have both. You've got oil in it to absorb impact, and you've got gas charge to also uh, help counteract that uh, impact. The oil is really just to dampen a, like a bounce, uh, and the gas is more to absorb the impact. And then you've got just gas charge shocks, which, depending on how they're made, uh, you know, the valving and such inside of them, that's all they need is the gas charge. Uh, what we've got here is the oil-filled gas charge shocks. And um, there's different methods of failure to these. Uh, this is a rear shock and this is a front shock. And uh, you'll see right here it says gasmatic on it. So you know these are gas charged and what you see here is you can tell that it was oil-filled and it has leaked. And actually, if you pick it up and you shake it, you can hear the oil in this one. Um, this one, if it's a oil-filled gas charge shock, you can tell if it's leaked gas because you can put it down and compress it. And everyone should know this. And it will not return on its own. If it had a full gas charge uh, in the shock, it would rebound immediately and I would not have to pull up on it like this. See, um, the fact that I pulled up on it and it actually resisted coming back up tells you that it's still got the oil charge in it and that oil is moving through the uh, baffling in there uh, providing the rebound resistance. Uh, it's just lost its gas charge, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't push back on you. Uh, this one as a rear shock and you cannot always tell they failed just because they have oil on them okay you've got to look at the overall picture here um, especially if your vehicle is leaking oil or transmission fluid uh, you know the whole shock can get covered in oil but what we have here is the top is clean and the bottom is oily uh, if it was oily because your vehicle was leaking the whole shock would be oily um, you can you see better in person, but this is pretty fresh oil that's come out of here. Now this one is interesting because it has leaked its oil charge, but still has uh, some of its gas charge left. See, it's pushing itself back apart. It's not very strong, as you can see, because I can just push down with one hand and it wasn't even very hard. Um, but still, this shock has failed. Uh, got all four new shocks on this thing now. I went with some uh, OE Spectrum or whatever the hell they are. Uh, supposed to be a better quality shock than these, but we'll see. Um, so I, I just wanted to show you that uh, a little bit about how you can look and inspect your shocks on your vehicle and see if they failed. And, you know, obviously if you're riding along and you're hitting bumps and it keeps bouncing after you've uh, gone over the bump, your shocks are probably bad. Um... You know, the big autumn uh, parts companies, they say every fifty to 75,000 miles, your shocks need to be replaced. And um, I'd say that's pretty much right. So I um, hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. If you would, please like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.